neural networks, convolutions, large language models, long short-term memory, data, data science, augmentation, aggregation, optimizers, loss functions, cost analysis, validation, transformers. What are all these things and where do I start? Would someone please explain? Well, hello everyone, and welcome to the AI and ML developer journey. I'm Lawrence Moroni, and I'm going to be your guide to help you get straight into the ideas of artificial intelligence and machine learning and understand how it all hangs together. And while this is a developer talk, I'm gonna keep it at a high enough level so that if you're not already a coder, you don't need to worry. It should still help you grasp the underlying concepts. And let's start with the whole idea of artificial intelligence. Now, what exactly do we mean when we use that term? Let's start with intelligence. There's lots of ways to define it, but I'm going to define it like this. Intelligence is how an organic brain processes data to make predictions. Now, that's very different from how a computer traditionally does it. So, for example, if I show you this picture of a cat, a computer would typically just recognize a whole lot of numbers with each representing pixel color and depth but a dog would recognize it as a cat and go, woof. So the idea of artificial intelligence is to program a computer to react to the data the way an intelligent being would, and not just see the pixels, but to understand the content of the image and what it represents. So if you take nothing else away from this video, please remember that. Artificial intelligence is a concept, and it's the concept of programming a computer to react to input data the way a living being does. And I'm sure your next question will be, well, how do I do that? Well, that's where machine learning comes in. Machine learning is a set of programming techniques that you use to help a computer to understand the contents of data. So for example, if you want a computer to distinguish between lots of animals, such as cats, dogs, or horses, then the goal of machine learning is to show a computer lots of examples of each, and then the computer will figure out from those pictures what makes a dog a dog, a cat a cat, and so on. And here's one of the key differences for software developers. You're used to writing code that will end up as a compiled program, which can then be executed on a device or a backend or a desktop machine or that kind of thing. But now, with machine learning, you're going to write code that ends up as something called a model. This term, model, you're going to see it everywhere. And what a model is, at its most basic level, is a set of mathematical functions that recognize input data and gives you a prediction about that data. So it might be a picture, and it will predict what the picture contains. Or it might be a piece of text, and it can predict the sentiment of that text. Is it spam? So to correctly create machine learning models to implement artificial intelligence, there's a number of steps that a developer will follow, and we'll look at those next. It all starts with data. Now, it's not as simple as just taking a database and throwing ML at it to get a solution. Often, you need to process and cleanse the data to get something that makes the subsequent steps much easier. And this requires tools. And the Google ecosystem contains lots of them. From tools that help you sort and filter your data to some that help you spot biases in your data and beyond. This step is often called data engineering. And if you're familiar with data science, that's where you can really bring your skills to the AI and ML realm by making your data shine. Next is modeling. And here's where the complexities of AI and ML are implemented in frameworks for you. So if you want a transformer for text or a convolution for images, they've been implemented in high-level frameworks such as TensorFlow or Keras. Then you, as a developer, can just use them without needing PhD-level knowledge of the underlying theory. You define your model architecture, and then you train the model with the data from earlier on. And if all goes well, you'll have a trained model that you can use in the next step, which is deployment. Now, it's no good having a model without a way of getting it in people's hands. And with the Google AI ecosystem, this can be via microcontrollers, mobile devices, web browsers or backends, cloud services, and a whole lot more. As a developer, your task is to integrate the model into these. So for example, if you want to use it on Android, training the model is one thing, but handling interfacing its data with the native data types on Android is quite another. And here's where a developer is particularly valuable. And it's also, thankfully, where we've got a bunch of tools to help you out. Now, most of the time, and in particular when you're just starting out with your journey, that this might look like you've reached the end. You've gotten your data, you've trained your model, and you've deployed it where people can use it. 
But in reality, your job is really only beginning at this point, because once the model is deployed and people are using it, you can gather data about what works and what doesn't, and then you can use that to continually improve your model. This process is called ops, or in the case of ML, it can generally be referred to as ML ops. So now you can see what the end-to-end -end life cycle for development and usage of ML models in order to build AI systems looks like. But there's a couple more things to take into account, and you'll likely hear a lot about these as you do your AI journey. The first is accelerated infrastructure, and this is hardware that makes training your models much faster and makes using your models quicker for your users. You've probably heard about GPUs for gaming, and they make advanced math go really, really fast. Well, the same math is used in machine learning, so GPUs can be your best friend. Of course, in the ML space, there's also a chip type called a TPU, and these are optimized for machine learning. Services like Google Cloud offer this infrastructure so you can be more efficient with your machine learning. And finally, and perhaps most importantly, is that AI gives you great power, and with great power, comes great responsibility. And while it's all very well to talk about being responsible in AI, you also need tools that allow you to be responsible with your systems end to end, from data to deployment and management. I'm not going to pretend that AI is easy. It isn't. There is a lot of complexity, but none of it is insurmountable. At Google, we've been doing the big thinking about what it takes to succeed at creating, deploying, and using AI solutions with machine learning. It comes from what we have learned, having done this for many years with many thousands of developers. And we're bringing it to you as a developer to make your path easier. There are many resources that you can use to get started, and I've listed some of them here. From a simple YouTube playlist that gives you the ML foundations, all the way up through online specializations where you can get hands-on quickly, to samples on our websites that you can dissect to understand them better. Wherever you are on your ML journey, I want to welcome you to the most vibrant ecosystem in the world, and I'm looking forward to what you will bring to the world of artificial intelligence. So thank you.